Hey, Dave Politis with the Can Am Missing Project, copyrighted edition for our YouTube page. Uh, beautiful night here in Montana, and uh, we're going to talk about something that I have never spoke about before, but I think it's important, and that is autopsies and what you should look for as a critical thinker when you read something in the press. And I think it's important. Now, a couple things. When you hear the word coroner, really a coroner in most instances is an elected official. And a lot of times the, the sheriff in the county is also the deputy coroner in the county. And his deputies go to specialized training and they do the field investigation when a body is found, which is important. And they, they're certified, they have special training they go out there a lot of times I was out there as a policeman when a body is found and I'm the one who did the initial investigation when we got there and then in large counties like where I was at they had deputy coroners that were assigned to the county coroner's office they came out and did a second uh, investigation on the scene so I wrote a report the deputy coroner wrote a report and then after that field investigation, they take the body to the coroner's office. And in large counties, they use what's called a pathologist. And they are certified to do the autopsy, meaning they take the body apart, they do drug tests on the fluids inside, they'll look at the contents of the stomach, they'll weigh different articles about the... Uh, the deceased person. Now what determines if there's an autopsy performed? And that's, that's an important point. Uh, let's just say somebody who has been diagnosed with dementia and is in an assisted living environment and they have a physician that checks on them every couple weeks and they end up essentially dying. Well, then that physician will sign the death certificate and issue the cause of death. And nine times out of ten, there won't be an autopsy. Now, a family member can demand an autopsy. Doesn't mean it's always going to happen. But you can also, as a family member, request that a second autopsy be done. Now, that's an interesting part because in many of the cases I've researched, where the real things of interest are found in my mind are through that second autopsy. A lot of times these small counties that contract for a pathologist, and sometimes it's not even a pathologist, sometimes it's just a normal physician that is looking for more work, and in these small counties, they do the autopsy. And they're dealing with a very small budget. And I've spoken about this before, that sometimes they'll only screen for 20 drugs or narcotics in somebody's system, when in reality, maybe they should be screening for 50. But it doesn't really matter whether it's a small county or a big county. They always screen for essentially the same 20 or 25 drugs. And they never usually screen for something called GHB, which I've spoken about at length. Now, in these big, big counties, like in Chicago, Cook County, uh, Miami-Dade County, Los Angeles County, they have a whole staff of pathologists. I mean, I know some of these counties have 20. And the reason being is they're doing autopsies all the time. Now, the strength of that is that they have meetings and they talk about their cases all the time. And I've spoke to some of these people about a few of their unusual cases. And they are as concerned as I am because they can't figure out the cause of death. And as a team of pathologists that aren't doing this as a weekend hobby, this is their full-time job profession. They're trained in medical school to do exactly this. And when these people who have the most practice hands-on with bodies in figuring out the cause of death, when they can't figure something out, that troubles me. And I've written about cases in L.A. County and cases on the East Coast where they have had these issues. So... 
And it's some of these cases out of Wisconsin, the families did a secondary autopsy and they did find out some things that were, that were troublesome. Now, the case I'm going to talk to you about is from New Zealand. New Zealand offers some real interesting cases to me. First of all, two islands out there in the middle of the ocean, lots of water, lots of strange things going on. And the case, I was just made aware of this about two weeks ago. It involved a man, 25 years old, and his name was Jason Chase. Some of you want to see pictures. There is Jason's picture. Jason, 25 years old. He disappeared December 13th, 2002. He was an athlete, big, strong kid. Kid, 25 years old, big, strong man. And uh, he was driving from an area called Gisborne, or Gisborne, which is uh, on the northern island on the coast. And he was driving for Christmas about 150 miles south to an area called Dan Danverk. I probably got that wrong, but I know a lot of you are telling me, oh, you, you say it this way. Yeah, well, sorry. And uh, Dankirk, or Danverk, is inland, about 150 miles southwest. And it's up against these mountains, very close to these mountains. Well, when Jason didn't arrive, the alert went out, and somebody found his car in, about eight miles northwest of the city he was going to in a place called Ruahine. And it was in a mountain area. They had no idea why the car was there. And they started a search. Now, one thing that bothers me a lot about some of these articles is that they'll say, oh, he, he was possibly depressed insinuating that everyone reads it and goes, oh, he must have been suicidal. That wasn't the case. Tell me somebody who hasn't been depressed, and I'll tell you somebody who isn't normal. Everyone gets depressed at some point in their life. Now, uh, they do a ground search. They fly helicopters nonstop for weeks. And right around Christmas time, they, they call off the search. Now, when they call it off, some people kept searching, and a person was flying over the scene, and they thought that they found a, they saw a body down in a riverbed, plain view. And they go up there, and they find out it's Jason. They do an autopsy. Pathologists can't determine the cause of death. And they describe the scene as very serene. He's laying on his side in a riverbed, no shoes, wearing a bright multicolored colored rugby shirt and shorts. Somebody who follows my research knows right away, hmm, it's kind of strange. No shoes, riverbed, in an area that had been previously searched many times, and he wasn't found. Now, some things that came up in, in this article and I will even tell you about it. The article was in the New Zealand Herald, and it talked about this. It's a very recent one. Now, most of the time when these articles come out, they don't talk about the key things that I'm interested in. Namely, what was in Jason's stomach? Was there anything in his stomach? And when was the approximate time of death? Key point to me. Now, they had searched for Jason for two weeks, approximately, gave up the search around Christmas time. They do the autopsy, and they determine that he had died somewhere between the 28th and the 31st of December. Does that mean something to you? It means a lot to me. It means that Jason was alive during the search for him. How can that be? Well, if his car was there, it's kind of parked in the middle of nowhere, where was he? A lot of people thought he was murdered. Incorrect. There was no bones, no fractures, no injuries to the body. There were no injuries to the internal organs. The coroner specifically stated that Jason's clothes were very clean. And it's as though he was sheltered. Another key point to me. 
So one of the last things they stated was that his feet had shown no injuries or wear like he had been going through the woods. Now you start adding these things up. Water, boulders, unknown cause of death, missing shoes, found in an area previously searched. Am I getting somewhere with you? So this coroner, case bothered him for a long time, so he's looking for a reason to issue a cause of death. And he talked about something called nettle trees. Now, it's true, it can cause death. But he went to the point of saying it must be this that caused the death, even though there was nothing found on autopsy to indicate that this was the cause of death, meaning any chemicals in his body. But the thing that really bothers me about some of these corners is that they will go to great lengths to issue a cause of death, but they won't explain all the things I just told you. So where was Jason for almost three weeks alive? Wasn't talking to his family. He wasn't in the woods walking around in bare feet because his feet didn't show any of those injuries. There was urine in his bladder and there was a lot of water in that area. But if he'd been going through the bush, his clothes would have been dirty and they weren't. These are the type of things that keep me up at night awake because they make no sense. This is one of those few articles where the people were brave enough to go out and dig for facts. And for all of you journalists out there, or people that call yourself journalists, start digging a little more. There was recently a uh, body found up at Glacier National Park. And the local journalist said it was found in an, in an inaccessible area and left it at that. An older man, 77 years old. How did he get into an inaccessible area? How can that be? And the journalist has no curiosity. They just drop it. Come on, folks. Have a little curiosity. Have a little journalistic integrity and do some work. In this case, it was there. And maybe some of the authorities in some of the areas of the U.S., are starting to understand and they're starting to purposely withhold these things. Now, the pathologists that I have talked to that are concerned about this inability to determine a cause of death realized many years ago in their profession that something odd was going on. But they don't talk about it unless it's amongst themselves. So I know I'm onto something. Uh, physicians tell me I'm onto something. And it's bothersome. And I want you to be that critical thinker when you're looking at an article. Don't be afraid to go right at that journalist whose name appears below that article. And many times there's an email. Email them and, and ask more questions. Push them for the answers. That's their job. So, Jason was found. Not a lot of answers as to where he was. Um, I feel sorry for his relatives. Uh, it's, it's an emotional thing. But it's, it's more concerning to me the whole scenario. Laying in a serene position in the middle of a riverbed. Almost as though, here I am, come find me. You won't miss me this time. And that, that bothers me. So, when you hear about other cases like this that match up in other countries, most of the time in the U.S. I'll find them, but in this one, if somebody hadn't pointed this out to me, I never would have known it. So I appreciate this very much. Uh, I'm still on top of it. I'm still collecting data. Uh, but it's things like this that will actually push us over the brink in understanding because these are the kind of things we're interested in. So I want to thank you for your continued support. Right below the screen you're watching right here, it's going to say description of the video. A lot of you ask for my email address, the website, where can I buy books. It's all there in the description of the video. And now we have over 50 videos out there for you to watch.
So uh, please take your time, understand that uh, these things are important, and it's, it's baby steps along the way, but we are getting there, and uh, it's with your help in keeping me and our team informed that uh, we'll escalate and accelerate this process. So I hope you're having a good summer, and uh, I care about you guys greatly. Make sure you take this video and post it everywhere you can. And remember that there's that special YouTube I did about trail safety and hiking safety. And pass that along. It's one of those 50. Pass that along to everybody you know because I don't want people to get lost on that trail needlessly. Biggest thing, carry a personal locator beacon. Tell friends where you're going. Check the weather and carry a gun if you know how to use it. Hope you have a great day. Thanks a lot for watching.